How's everybody doing tonight? We're all good? Amen. Well, tonight, you know, we had, obviously, there's a lot going on in the world, right? And I believe there's a whole lot of shaking that will continue to go on. And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me about is, um, you know, to speak on a spirit of fear and about um, how, how to walk that out. Because it is a spirit, but then when you have a mindset that's there is, you know, like what are some of the practical things that we do? Because you have to really war against this. And, you know, and I do believe we're, something else is coming. I don't know what, but I do know that this last situation with the pandemic caused a lot of fear, right? And um, so we have to prepare ourselves against that because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. Amen. And, um, and we have his spirit, we have his DNA in us. So this isn't to put anybody down, but if you really have, we're struggling with fear, then it's, this is a good time to really build yourself up because listen, we, we have wisdom, I'm not saying we don't use wisdom, but I'm also not going to cower to just like with the pandemic, you know, we weren't cowering to that. We, we knew that, like, you know, listen, let's just be a little, like, use a little wisdom. If, you, if you're sick, you stay home, right? I mean, I don't need the government to tell me, you know, that I have to stand six feet apart from somebody. If you're not feeling well, stay the heck home. But, but we have to uh, understand that God wants us to walk in the power and the authority that he has given us. And we're going to talk a lot, I am going to talk a lot about deliverance because, you know, we are people that need to understand and know, must know how to flow and operate in deliverance because a lot of people are going to be manifesting left and right but if they are are we cleaned out do we know how to operate in this and and it's part of the you know the gospel heal the sick in matthew 10 8 it says heal the sick cleanse the leopard cast out devils and raise the dead and that's for all of us to understand that but to become mature in it so Anyhow, the ministry I wrote here, the ministry of deliverance is an essential part of our lives. And, you know, so many, you know, in church life are, don't walk in freedom because they're, they're, they have a spirit. And it could be a generational thing from your past. It could be, you know, trauma that occurred. You know, and when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about something like for those of you who are old enough to watch you know, the exorcist or Linda Blair kind of a situation. That's not what happens. But when you see people, if, if you, you've done everything you could over and over again and you're praying and you're worshiping your fa and you're not getting free, well, it could be a spirit. Now, here in my heart, not everything's a demon, right? The devil's not that good. But, but, but most of it's our mindset because we don't know the word. And, and that was the main, one of the main things that really helped me to get free and I have to still be really careful because that is a generational thing that's been in my family. And so, um, you know, and I still have to really war against this thing, okay? And, but it doesn't overtake me. And uh, so the ministry of deliverance will strengthen you and will prepare you for a greater manifestation of God's power. And it's nothing to be fearful of. Listen, the enemy is really fearful of you knowing who you are in Christ and you operating in the authority that he's given each of us when we became born again. And the enemy's defeated. So we're operating from a place of victory, not defeat. But, but again, when we're in that place, it, it's like, whoa, you know, it's like evil versus good. And it's like, I'm not backing down. And it's like, you know, you may have fallen a couple times, but after a while, it's like, I am not backing down. Here's what the word says, period. And this is the only thing I know that has gotten me through things because, you know, there's just a lot of struggle. So I'm speaking tonight from experience from my life. And, what, and how I had to war. You have to discipline yourself too. In this, and, and I'm telling you, you've got to get in the Word. You can't read it once a week. Because then you're going to have a once a week experience. And it's not good. <laughs> so, now on the handout, did, did I, I sent it to you, right? I sent it to you? Okay, you got it? Okay. So, um, I have some of the definitions. And I know I've shared this many times, but it's worth repeating. When you are, I didn't write scripture next to it, but in, in the word salvation in the New Testament is soteria. There you go. And it means deliverance, 
salvation, health, prosperity, preservation, safety. So when you became born again, this is what came with that. It's not just so that you can get to heaven. It's so that you can walk a life of deliverance, of health, of prosperity, preservation, and safety. And then when you see in the New Testament where the word says saved, that's sozo, and that also is very similar. It means to heal, to save, to preserve, to rescue, listen, to deliver out of danger and into safety. See, see God's on this thing. And he came to set the captives free. He, doesn't, he didn't come and die on the cross so we can be miserable and not live a life of freedom. He didn't come so and say, oh, well, gee, they're going to be battling with porn, but I don't know how to get them out of it. No, he came to set the captives free. And whatever the issue is, whatever the root is, he, he enables us. And that's why we have to spend time with him to get a revelation of what's that root system? Why am I so anxious? Why am I battling with panic attacks, right? Because God wants to set us free. So when you look up the word oppressed, Lord knows I don't know how to say that Greek word, but it means to exercise dominion over. So the enemy, there's that war, and the enemy wants to exercise dominion over you and me, and that, like, because he'll know whether we believe the word or not. And that's where God comes in. That's where our, our prayer time comes in, our worship time. is like, Lord, you know, like, help me, our worship time. You know, just it, it washes the, the, the weariness away. And, um, you know, it's not just about, God doesn't want us to just do this kind of thing. You know, he just doesn't want us to just mouth things. He wants us to experience it and know that I am not backing down. I know my God and we shall do great exploits. It doesn't mean that you don't get nervous or fearful, but it means you're not going to allow that to overrun you and to cause you to back down. Because the bottom line is he doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. That's just it. He wants you to stay in a, in a stuck place where you're not moving forward, you're not going backwards, or he'd be happy if you went backwards, but you're not doing anything. Let's just play it safe. Well, guess what? He's not going to play it safe with you because he's out to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible says in John 10, 10, but he has come to give his life and that more abundantly. So we have, a, we have all authority, every single one of us here, over the enemy, over evil spirits. And we receive this authority, like I said, when we're born again. In Ephesians 6, 12 and 13, it says here, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, as you know, contending over only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against powers, against the world's forces of this present darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places, supernatural places. Therefore, what? Put on a whole armor of God so that we will be able to stand successfully Resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. Focus on those words. And, and that's what I've been saying. Fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. God is raising up an army. An army, I mean, we've heard that we're the army of God, but I mean a remnant army that, that knows their God, not backing down because the world needs to see a people that believe in and have hope in something. You can keep the scriptures up. And so, um, you know, so, I mean, that, that's just imperative, but I love that. Fully prepared. I said, Lord, I want to be fully prepared. And it's not a work thing. It's, it's us spending time with him. It says meditating on the word, fully prepared and movable. And we are victorious because the lots of the Bible says we are victorious people. We're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. And I didn't put it on the handout on the thing there, but it's Ephesians 1.3 says that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. We have it all. So that means we have to learn how to tap into that, how to interact with the Lord. In Luke 10, 19, it says, behold, I give you, put your name in there, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. I give you power. I give you authority, power to tread. When the lies are coming in, when the anxious thoughts are coming in, when the enemy's trying to tell you that you're going to die or you're having a panic attack or you're not going to make it or that fear of failure or, you know, uh, you're never going to prosper, you're always going to have a rotten marriage, you need to tell them to be quiet in Jesus' name. And then, but we're going to talk about what you need to do. But also you need to know how to combat that with the word of God. 
And, it, and, and listen, it's progressive at times. You know, like when, when you heard uh, Jane Hammond, when she was talking about how they warred over their area in, in Florida and for 16 years, I think it was, that it was in poverty, right? And then boom, it was like the suddenly of the Lord, but it took all that time of plowing the field and praying and not giving up. And, and so little by little, you're making your headway. You're not giving up. And because God is faithful. And, and I just, I love his word. I just love meditating in the word because it empowers you. And um, so in Ephesians 6.10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have to be strong in him. And so our combat, our war with the enemy should be with the consciousness that we have authority over him. And I'm going to keep saying it, and he is defeated. So now, fear is the number one tool of the enemy. Anybody here ever get afraid? <laughs> I mean, oh, my gosh. I'll tell you, it can, it can really do a number on you, right? And so, but I have to learn. I have to, like, and I'll still have my moments. I don't want him saying a word. But, you know, I, we, I have my moments still, but you have to still plow through and not, not allow it to overtake you. Right? And it's like, wait a minute, devil, you're under my feet. Now, there, there are things that sometimes are common sense, Mr. Roselli, that, you know, like if a car is coming, be careful that it doesn't hit you or something like that, you know. But other than that, I mean, you know, but then you have your logical and your illogical fears, right? And so um, we just had a little issue in Italy that he almost got hit by a car and then he yelled at me because I said, be careful, you know. Anyway, but I forgave him. Anyway. So, fear is a tool of the enemy. <laughs> Ooh, Lord Jesus. It's a tool of the enemy that we all have to know that, like, he's going to get us. And he knows the buttons to push. That he knows all of our buttons that get us going, right? And, um, and so, if fear cripples, it paralyzes you. How many times have you, let's say if you had to get up in front of someone to speak, this used to happen to me all the time, and you have like, you know, like 42 pages in your mind that you can speak on until you have to get up to speak and you go totally blank because you're totally fear-based, totally paralyzed, and you, and you can't remember a word. It's like you never got saved. You haven't even been saved. You never read the word. You're, you're terrified, right? That used to happen to me all the time. Like, no, no, don't look. You know, so like when if, you know, you're traveling, the person looks at you, you're like this, you know, like, God, please don't let them, please don't let them call me out. But, you know, it paralyzes you. So it could be fear of the dark. It could be fear of bugs. It could be, you know, fear of speaking in front of people. I know, I hate bugs. And so, ugh. And so fear allows you to believe the lies. And that's why, again, it's like, wait a minute. Why am I getting, how many, why am I getting so afraid over this thing? How many of you have thought about how much time you wasted over dumb fear? over listening to those lies. Oh my gosh, whose voice is louder? You know, and that's what I keep saying. Is it God's voice that's louder? Or the whispers of the enemy? Or because of circumstances? Let's say in the past you made a mistake. Well, guess what? You don't ever want to do that again, right? You're afraid. I remember uh, when I was a kid, I got my arm stuck in the escalator, right? And it almost broke my arm for years. I was afraid to go in the escalator. But you have to keep pressing through. And still now, like if I have two pieces of luggage, I'm not doing it. He's doing it. I'm afraid. Because I'm afraid I'm going to fall, but, but at least I'll still do it. Right? So you have to pass, go past your fears. And so um, I wrote here, uh, let's see, fear cripples. It prevents us from moving forward in our destiny. And, and fear also causes us to make really dumb decisions, bad decisions, because of fears. It's fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of, of death. That's a big one. Fear of abandonment. Fear has torment. And, and you know, and it crowds out God's voice. It, and that's the main thing. We want to hear him. But when you're anxious and you're fearful over your life, over your family, over your situation, and you're focused more on that, it's going to present a problem. And so in first, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, you know the scripture. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And that sound mind means a disciplined mind. See, we have to discipline ourselves. We have to get in the word. I have scriptures written all over the place. And I meditate on it. And to this day, I still do that. You know, I used to have uh, little index cards. 
And, but I, st I still write them all over the place, and I meditate on and I speak them out loud, and I declare the word, because it's, it's, that's like your spiritual spinach, you know? You're, you're, you remember, for those of you who are a little older, Popeye the Sailor Man, <laughs> he ate his spinach and he'd get the muscles. Well, that's our spiritual spinach, all right? And so in Proverbs 18.21, it says, death and life are in the power of our tongue, and as you know, our tongue possesses power. And, but when, if we're going to keep speaking death over our situation, if we're going to speak fear, if we're going to speak failure, if we're going to say, I'm never going to get ahead, my marriage will never change, my wife will never change, my husband will never change, my kids will never change, you're, you're cursing that situation. doesn't mean you can't say what's going on. But if you're going to constantly speak negative, 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 I, I don't know that I'm going to live, I'm going to die young, you know, stop. The Bible, what's the Bible say? He says, I promise you a long life. You know, speak life over yourself. Don't speak death over yourself. So we, when we're doing that, we're speaking hopelessness and defeat, and the enemy loves it. And he, he showed me a vision. The Lord showed me a vision years ago of the enemy sitting at my desk, rocking back and forth with his feet up on, the ta on my desk with his arms back like that, calling me a sucker. Because of the fear and worry, and, and all I kept thinking about was, oh, what's going to go wrong? Oh, my God, I can't do this. Oh, my God, this is wrong. And, and you know, really struggling with this fear. And, and, I, th and I saw that vision. It really aggravated me. I thought, who's he calling a sucker? <laughs> and the Lord said, you know, and he said, well, the devil doesn't even need to harass you. You're doing enough of it because you're believing the lie. And all you're focused on is what's not happening. And all you're focusing on is the lies and the anxiety and the fears. And, and you have to stop. Declare the word of the Lord. And I thought, man, Lord, I don't know how to do this. Because when you're in that moment, when you're in that place of having panic and fear, it seems like it's the most overwhelming thing to quote a scripture. And I remember when I would start quoting the word, I would think, oh, my God, this doesn't work. I have to quote the word. This is going to set me free. Yes, it's one of the things that will set you free, I promise you. In Isaiah 41.10, it says, Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, and salvation. Isn't that good? There are so many awesome scriptures in Isaiah about not fearing. And, and I would just meditate on it. And then I would say, Lord, what is the root? Well, was, a lot of it was generational. But, he, but I had to, I said, Lord, help me to, to see things through your eyes, to, to see things in a way that I'm, where I'm trusting you. I, you know, in Proverbs 3, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, right? In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I had to, I would go all over these scriptures and, 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 and honest to God, it would be like every day I, I would focus and decree the word and decree the word. And this fear, like if my husband literally was three or five minutes late, this fear came on me. Oh, my God, did something happen to him? Did he get in an accident? You know, it was always the worst, right? And so I said, Lord, I, I, I thank you that he's protected. But then the fear, it was like I had two, per, like two souls. It was just this war going on all the time. And then, um, but every day... I had my scriptures, and I would just read them out loud, and I would decree. And one day, and I've shared this before, this is when uh, Brother Shambach, R.W. Shambach was alive, and he had a radio station. And I was really in a panic mode, and I was really having a hard time pacing in the room. And I'm like, oh, dear God. And I'm like, I mean, this fear thing came on me. And it is a spirit, so we have to learn, to, and we're going to take authority over it too. But all of a sudden... I turned the radio on, and, and R.W. Shamrock goes, stop fearing. And he had that loud voice. And it, it scared me because he, he started, like, yelling, stop fearing. He says, you don't need to fear. And I'm like, ah. And so I said, okay, God. And so every day, every day, I would quote the word and decree the word. And I had all the, the scriptures written out. And I would just speak them out loud and speak them out loud. And each day I noticed less and less Unless that, that anxiety, that fear was overtaking me. That's the power of the word. Because I was determined. I said, I'm not living like this. I'm not living in that place of anxiety and fear. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, Let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, 
craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied. Learn to be content in whatever state you're in with your present circumstances and what he and with what you have. For he, God himself, has said, I will, I love this, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. Basta. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless or forsake you or let you down, relax my hold on you, assuredly not. So take comfort and, and, are, and, so take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? Isn't that good? He will never leave us nor forsake us. John 4.18 in the Passion says, Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. And whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. And one of the key things for me was really learning about the Father's love. That was really key for me. Um, because Lord knows I didn't even understand what in the world it meant, you know, when it says perfect love. I'm like, who's, who's perfect love? <laughs> I didn't even realize it was gone. But perfect love casts out all fear. And it's, it's knowing that he's there for us. He loves us. He's, he's God of covenant. In Psalm 89, it says that he has a covenant that he won't alter. And that covenant encompasses protection and safety and, 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 and breakthrough and healing and deliverance. That's, that's what he promises us, all right? So we're going to pray in a minute. But I have a bunch of scriptures um, that I want to read. It says we have to, I wrote here, we have to address root issues of fear. And it could be generational, it could be through trauma, it could be through circumstances in your childhood if you're struggling with fear, the school issues, it, you know, however it came in, it's there. But you don't have to stay that way. So you don't want to be a prisoner in, in an invisible cage because that's what fear does. It causes you to be a prisoner in an invisible cage. Psalm 34, 17 says, when the righteous cry out for help, are you righteous? It says, the Lord heals, hears, and delivers them out of all their fears. And this version says troubles, but not, the King James says fears. 34, Psalms 34, 19, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Psalm 27, I mean, I would, I would quote this scripture. There's over 365 scriptures on fear. One for each day. How about that? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He is the, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then it goes on to say, when the enemy and the wicked one came upon my flesh to eat my flesh, it says they stumbled and fell. So when you look up the word where it says here, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Salvation is Yesha. And, and I forget. Oh, I did put it there. It means deliverance, salvation, to me, rescue, safety, prosperity, victory, to save from moral troubles, avenging. So he's saying the Lord is my light and my deliverance, my rescuer, my safety. He's my prosperity, my victory, saving me from moral troubles. He's avenging me. And it goes, whom shall I be afraid, right? He's the strength of my life. That word strength means, again, safety, protection, refuge, stronghold, a fortified place. Oh, I love that. That's who he is. He's like, I am your prosperity. I am your victory. I am your, the one who rescues you and saves you from moral trouble. See, when you meditate on and you get that through your head, I'm telling you, it just become, you become so one with the word that no, no devil's going to tell you anything different. It's like, back off. This is what the word says. And I, we have to take every thought captive. 1 John 4, 4 says, little children, believers, dear ones, you are of God and you belong to him. And you've already overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist, because I love this. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. All right? And so it's like that's where, you know, we're doing deliverance like back off, pal. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, and you're under my feet. See, the enemy just will do everything in his power to get you to be an offense, to get you to murmur and complain all the time, to get you to have your focus off the Lord, to miss worship, to not pray, to not read, because he knows that empowers us. He knows that kicks his behind in plain English. He, he recognizes that there's no... There's no um, um, 
what do you call that? There's no uh, measure, not measure, what's the word? There's no comparison, no comparison, none whatsoever because of God's DNA in us. But the Bible says we need to get the mind of Christ. In Isaiah 54, 17, it says here, and I know you know this, no weapon that is formed against you, no weapon of what? No weapon of fear, no weapon of anxiety, no weapon of panic attacks, no weapon of disappointment, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the saints of the Lord, those in whom the ideal servant of the Lord is reproduced. And this is the righteousness or the vindication which they obtained from me. This is that which I impart to them as their justification. So no weapon formed against you. That's formed against you. So um, we're going to pray in a minute. In Deuteronomy 36, uh, 31, 6, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble and dread before them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Listen, if you're struggling and if you have some fear issues, we're gonna, I'll talk about practical issues, but please get these scriptures and start meditating on them. And, and we're going to renounce fear today, but it's like, you know what, Lord, I'm not bowing to that. I'm not going to allow the world to dictate how I'm to respond to something when the Word of God teaches us how we're to respond. Amen? So some of the practical ways, right? Well, first of all, before I even say that, don't be, I wrote here, don't believe the devil's lies about to, that he speaks to you about yourself or according to your, you know, whatever, your family, you know, where it gets you anxious, worried, you're feeling rejected, you're never going to prosper, you're never going to get ahead, you know, and, I, and whatever that lie is, think about it right now. Are you in agreement with those lies? And so what are some practical ways? I mean, this isn't brain, you know, uh, surgery. Um, um, set your thoughts on godly matters instead of on your problems, right? If you're going to keep focusing on your problem, you're going to be afraid. And it's like, it, it's, it's, you have to, it's not that you don't ever think about it, but I'm not going to dwell on the issue, right? So Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So we have to refuse to dwell in negative report. You know, how many times have you heard something and you're panicking because you get word or it's like about a health issue or a family issue or whatever, job situation. And it's like, the Lord says to me, why do you go that route right away? He said, how about if it's good? I remember like if I was called into the office, I always thought, oh no, I'm in trouble because <laughs> I always did get in trouble. But, but you know, but see, it's, it's something, it's a circumstance from your past, Right. And so it's like, no, Lord, I, I have the favor of God on me. It's not that always something's going to go wrong. So we have to really be intentional about uh, shifting our mindsets, and you have to work at it. It's not just saying one little prayer. You have to work at it and be diligent. Give your worries to the Lord. First Peter 5, 6, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Meditate on the word. I always picture his alt like an altar, and I lay it down. Today in uh, Bible study, I had a word and it was from um, 1 Kings 19, 2 Kings 19, when Hezekiah was told he was going to die, and, and, and he was crying out to the Lord, and he actually had his note paper or whatever, like whatever your prayer request is, you know, put him out all before the Lord, and he knelt there, and he cried out to God, and he got, you know, an extra 15 years, but I saw that. It was such a vivid picture Whatever your fears are, whatever you're battling, whatever your disappointments are, or your, your, where you feel defeated, or you don't feel like you're getting breakthrough, place, put it out there before the Lord. Picture it at an altar and lay it on the altar and say, Lord, I'm crying out to you. You know, in Jeremiah 33, 3, call, you know, it says, cry, call out unto me. Now we show you hidden and fenced in things that you know not of. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you that wisdom and that direction. Right? And so it's, it's powerful. And so pray in tongues. You know, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Praying in tongues is really important that we do that. And if you're not filled, we'll pray with you to get filled. But it's really important to pray in the Spirit. Anyone, the Bible, because in Corinthians it says when we pray in the Spirit, we edify ourselves. We're edifying ourselves when we're praying in the Spirit. Right? And then Philippians uh, 4.8, finally, brethren, 
You know, think on whatever's true, noble, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Choose what you will think and focus on. Don't be all negative. You know, like uh, we, we did that fast about uh, fasting negative words. Don't, don't constantly always dwell on the negative. And, and, you know, for some, like you may have to, you know, put this away. Get rid of the phone. Get rid of uh, the computer for a season because it's a distraction if you're not spending time with the Lord because that is what's going to cause your breakthrough. So we have every legal right to remove and come out of agreement with the lies of the enemy. Amen? I'm going to ask you to stand. And um, I'm not even going to ask if anyone has battled fear because we've all had battled fear, Right? And so maybe some more so than others, but, but I'm going to pray a prayer about just renouncing and coming out of agreement, but that's just, remember, one part of it. The other part is you have to do your due diligence. It's like getting in spiritual shape, just like I can't go to the gym for you and you can't go for me. I wish you could, but you can't. But we have to, you know, do our own thing and get your scriptures and get a strategy here, get downloads from Holy Spirit and say, I'm not living like this. I'm not going to be anxiously, you know, always in anxiety, always worrying and always fearful. Because you know that, like, even scientifically, it affects your health. That it affects your health. So uh, I'm going to pray. And I wrote it out. I don't think I put it up there. No, I didn't. So, Lord... We just come before you, first of all, Lord. We just thank you that your word says that you came to set the captives free. And, Lord, it, your word also says that for this very purpose, you were manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given us the ability to walk in freedom because of your blood, because of the cross, because you rose from the dead, because you took the keys away from the enemy, and because he is defeated. And we have your DNA in us, oh God. And Lord, we repent and we renounce every legal right, known and unknown, that every demonic door that we may have opened consciously or unconsciously, we renounce it and we shut that door. We renounce the spirit of fear. You can say that I renounce the spirit of fear. I renounce the spirit of anxiety. I renounce worry. Lord, I repent for opening this door. I choose to forgive my ancestors for this open door of fear. And I destroy every demonic legal right of fear. I command the spirits of fear and torment to dry up in Jesus' name. I renounce a generational curse of fear in my family line. I rebuke and bind every spirit of fear and worry in Jesus' name. Lord, I repent for yielding to it. I repent for not trusting you. And I choose to come out of agreement with fear's lies. And I will no longer obey your commands. I renounce your whispers. And I renounce your voice. And I choose to trust Jesus. And I decree my freedom in Jesus' name. For I do not have a spirit of fear, but I have a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Lord, now you don't have to pray. Now, Lord, I take authority. Over every spirit of fear, every spirit of worry, every spirit of anxiety, every spirit of, of discouragement, and uh, even there's infirmity that's always linked with fear. And I speak to a spirit of infirmity, and I command complete release right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I break off every demonic assignment that the enemy has released over the people of God that has tried to prevent us from fulfilling our destiny call. I break that assignment off right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for the power of your blood. We thank you for your freedom. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you, Lord God, that deliverance is the children's bread. And God, we choose to trust you. We choose to 
Just meditate on your word because your word says, let God arise and our enemies be scattered. Father, we thank you that we are not a fear-based people, but we are a faith-based people. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.